Do you believe in other life forms on other planets, i.e. aliens? If so, how do you explain God dying on the cross and not saving these other races? Um, I think I have, I've answered that before, and, but I will elaborate on it, and I'm glad that was answered, that was asked. The evidence is pointing more and more to the fact that there most likely is life outside of this planet. Most likely, there have been a number of recent breakthroughs in our understanding of Mars. There's a good chance we're going to find life under the ice uh, of one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. And I won't go into the details there. But even if you argue just from a statistical standpoint, we know life's possible because of the physical laws of this universe because we exist. Unless we're a fluke, then there's a certain reasonable chance that it happened because we're here. And I do have a page on my website again, faithreason.org, which talks about extraterrestrials. Since we exist, there's a good chance, say there's a 50% chance of it happening over the lifetime of the universe, about 13 billion years, then there's an excellent chance there's one or two in the whole universe. Now, the universe consists of 100 billion galaxies, and each galaxy is approximately 100 billion stars, large galaxies. That's a lot of stars. If you increase the probability just a little, then there's a lot. As far as salvation, I consider very, most likely that Jesus came to other, um, other life forms like ours. No reason he could not have. And, and reach them. Some may be close, some may be farther away than us. By the way, we may, may never find another intelligent life form. But the maybe universe may be full of them just because it is so vast. And... So we know that he came for us. We know he exists. We know by the evidence. We know that they, pro and we probably, they do exist. He's probably going to, I would, he would probably has come to them, but we may never actually come in contact with one. Go ahead. Dr. Hoven. Okay, the idea that life exists on other planets is, is pure imagination. There's no evidence for it whatsoever. I've studied the UFO question quite a bit. Uh, been to the UFO Museum just a few weeks ago there in Roswell, New Mexico. Um, studied it quite a bit. I've uh, read many, many books on the topic. There are some excellent books from a Christian perspective on UFOs. You might want to get this one, End Time Delusion, about UFOs, or this one, UFO 666, um, or a a Chuck Missler's book, Alien Encounters, is excellent on the subject. What happened at Area 51 in Roswell, New Mexico? Well, nobody's talking for sure. Nobody who knows is talking, but nine months later, Al Gore was born. <laughs> that is just an interesting bit of trivia, but... Uh, um, the <laughs> Cosmic Conspiracy is an awesome book on the topic. Uh, I would have to say from a scriptural perspective, no, there is no life on other planets. From a scientific perspective, I would say there simply is no evidence at all. So if somebody wants to believe on life on other planets, that's perfectly fine. However, they're, they're not talking about their science now, they're talking about their religion. And they need to admit that, okay? This is not part of science, this is part of a religion. So. UFOs, I think, fit into several categories. Misidentified natural objects, weather balloons, swamp gas, etc. Top secret government or private experiments. Hitler had a round, cra a round airplane that flew 50 years ago. Okay? Uh, satanic or demonic activity. Satan can only be one place at a time. God is all places at all times. So it may be Satan uses some kind of instantaneous or near instantaneous transportation system. It could be alien life from other planets, but I don't buy that for a second. There's no evidence for it whatsoever. So as far as if we're going to deal with science... Science is on the side of God made all of this just for us. People say, why did he make all those billions of stars? Oh, it's for what's called the oh wow factor. So we can walk outside and go, oh wow, what a mighty God we serve. Okay? Would you like to extend the time? Yeah, I would if all right. you wouldn't mind. As far as flying saucers, yes, we have no evidence. I did not say there was evidence. I only said that we look at the physics, we look out at the universe, it's very likely that it has happened. And scientists admit that we don't have any evidence. And that's an example of science being honest. There's no conspiracy to push evolution on us. It's just what the science says. And again, you can um, look at the creationist arguments on, on my website and go through some of those yourself. The evidence is overwhelming. For And as far as things that scientists have done for us in evolution, Evolution is fundamental to the understanding of biology. And one of the reasons we've made such strides in, in conquering HIV is understanding how it mutates, which is evolution. So scientists have given us great 
great uh, un um, progress and help, and it's through understanding of science and evolution is fundamental, etc. Dr. Hoven, one minute. Yes, I've heard that statement, evolution is fundamental to science. I've heard it for hundreds and hundreds of times. I'd like to see what's fundamental about it. I mean, that's a mantra. They just mantra. They just keep repeating and repeating and repeating, and I think they probably really believe it. But it's not true, okay? <clears throat> They're just talking. As far as science admitting there is no life on other planets, no proof of life on other planets, that's great. I'm glad they admit that. Why don't they admit all we've ever seen is dogs produce dogs, therefore there is no evidence that dogs ever came from something non-dog. If you'd apply that same logic you did to UFOs to the logic from biology, you'd come to, come to the conclusion God created the original dogs, they've always produced dog kind, and that's all that's ever happened. I mean, that's, that's where science ends. So evolution has nothing whatsoever to do with science. It is not the fundamental doctrine of science. It's a useless theory, and I think counterproductive to science, and I think actually quite dangerous. We teach the kids they're an animal, and then we wonder why they act like animals. No marvel to me.